Hello everyone, this is Julia. Thank you so much for joining me on my craft room adventures. Today I have another Challenge a Crafty Friend card to share with you with my friend Leanne. And this time the theme was Case an Old Card into Your New Style. And uh, what that means is basically take a card that you made possibly the longest time ago that you started and remake it the way you would today. And uh, I've only been card making for just about a year, so there isn't that much of a difference. Uh, but uh, what I did change is use basically new dies for the shadow box. And I also used Copics and just try to make it as nice as I possibly could for the style that I would use today. I die cut a background panel with sponge sugar and Victorian velvet distress ink and I'm using the Lawn Fawn Cloudy Stencil to just stencil my background. I die cut two of the Grassy Knoll Cloud panels from Hello Bluebird. And I'm also ink blending the sponge sugar and the Victorian velvet on the edges of those. Since I didn't know how I wanted to place the clouds, I just left them this long uh, and then I could move around where I wanted it to be. This is the 3D arch banner from Mama Elephant and I'm also ink blending that in the same colors because I know that the base of my shadow box is going to be white. And I don't think I actually mentioned that. What I will be making is probably, I think it's the third project I ever shared on Instagram. And it's a swing shadow box uh, using the Wish Upon a Star with Mama Elephant. And I really like that you have the 3D effect and the little bunny just swings in the center that's in the moon. I thought that was, that was really cute and I had a lot of fun remaking it. So I'm just using the liquid pixie dust from Lawn Fawn, just splattering that all over the background. There you can see. And now it's time to color my images. I uh, wanted to keep the images pretty light, just like I did the first time I made it. Uh, before I used Ziggs and now I'm using Copic markers. I'm using E43 as my darkest shade. Just blending that out with E41. And then blending that together with the E40. I'm not adding too much shading to those, just to keep them as light as I possibly could. I just went in with a second layer of the E41 and then the E40. And I'm doing the same thing on the other two little bunnies. Just adding the shadows wherever I thought it would look good. Not great with light source, so I just basically wing it. I hope to probably learn it one day, but for now this this is fine. <laughs> just blending it, blending the E43 out with E41 to get a nice transition. And then the E40, and again doing that with the bunny on the cloud. This time I made sure the shadow is uh, where his head is basically down on the cloud because that's where a shadow would be, I think. <laughs> and I'm just using the E43 as my darkest, E41 and then E40. For the wings and basically the bushy tails, I'm using W00 and W0. I'm using some makeup blush to add some color to the insides of the ears and the cheek, just like I've been doing for months now and I'm still really loving it. I, I feel like I have to mention that because when you haven't seen any of my other videos it's just weird to see a makeup blush there. <laughs> so I hope you don't mind. I'm using the R81 just very very sparingly on the edge and I'm blending that out with RV000 and then blending that out with the blender, the, the zero marker. And I wanted to make sure that those match the, the shade of the Victorian velvet and the sponge sugar on the background. For my yellows, I'm using Y11, just on the very edge and the tips of the moon, then the Y0, and I recently purchased the Y000 just to 
have an even lighter option because I do like pastel colors a lot. So I just used the Y000 on the lightest areas. Also using the same shades on my cute little bird. And since I knew I would be making a 3D shadow box card, I went ahead and embellished my images now. I'm using the Nouveau Aqua Shimmer Pen in Glitter Gloss all over the moon, the cloud, the wings of the little bunny. There you can see the pretty shine. And I decided to also add some, uh, I think there's our stardust stickles on the wings. The little star that hangs off the moon and also on the edge of the cloud. Just carefully pulling that down because I didn't want to have like a huge chunk of glitter there. And there you can see all the images that I will be using for my card. I have my background, my banner, lots of little clouds that come from the puffy clouds die and also from the displayer card. The displayer card I die cut twice out of white cardstock and you can see a little X there. I accidentally, uh, the die shifted with my paper on it and this part is a little shorter at that edge so I just make sure to use it for the back of the card and nobody will ever know. I mean, except for you, but I'm sure you can keep a secret. Now for my swing mechanism, I'm using a penny, a strip of acetate, one of the MFT spin and slide discs and a little circle I die cut. Then I'm reinforcing the score lines of the display card. I really find that this gives you much better results than the uh, score lines that the die creates. Uh, I don't find that I need to do this with a lot of dies, but with this one um, to get like a smooth edge and a straight fold, I really found that it's really helpful to reinforce the score lines. Now to fold it, you basically just flip it on its back fold it towards the frame, then back towards you, and then towards the frame, so you have a little W fold. Just using my bone folder to smooth out the lines. And now away from you to get the last bit. And that's also the part where you'll be adding your adhesive. I just use score tape, any kind of tape will do. And this is actually part where I made a little bit of a mistake. I don't like that you have the frame in the back, but I'll be explaining that in a second because I need to address this. I die cut the clouds, but I wanted it to be a hill panel, so I needed to score it. I just used the measurements that uh, the die provides. So this is three, uh, six three eighths long and scored one half inch from each side. So six three eighths is the length of the panel scored from at half an inch on either side. So now to my mistake, I thought it would be easiest to adhere the background just as is. Because I don't like that you have a background and you can see the inside of the frame of the display card because you uh, don't have the option not to cut out the window for the back. And I just thought, well, this is easier. So I just adhered it to one of the panels of the displayer card and then to your card base. But then when I add the second part, you actually have the white edge now on the right side of my display card on the inside, which really isn't a big deal. It didn't end up bothering me that much. But just for future reference, I would basically assemble the display card and then add the background panel into the assembled card. Then you'll have a smooth backside for the card. Now to assemble my swing mechanism. I adhered the cloud panel. I just cut it down to fit inside the shadow box part. And now I'm just using my lawn fawn ruler to find the center of my, my card. I really love this ruler because it has a zero center on one side, which makes it really easy to find the, the center of things because I'm just not great with eyeballing it. I added score tape to the front and back of the MFT spin and slide disc. I wanted to make sure that it's really sturdy and I am using thick acetate and a hole punch to create the opening that will perfectly fit around the spin and slide disc. I also added some score tape to the end of the acetate strip. In this case I added it too low because the opening is much smaller than the card that I made before, but I'll just snip it off, add a new piece of score tape and it'll be fine. 
I made sure to use some powder tool around the edge just to make sure that the mechanism works smoothly and that it doesn't stick to any adhesive. I'm removing the other side and now I'm pressing down the little circle die cut to close the mechanism. Uh, you don't need to do this step, but I do find that the effect is much nicer when you add a little weight to your image. So I'm just using an old Pfennig, which is the currency that we had before we got the Euro, which was in, oh my god, it was 2002, I think. But I still have quite a few of those left, so I'm just using those for crafting because they're not actually currency anymore. But I, I think it's like a penny in the US, so just a small little coin or anything that will add a little bit of weight there. Also using score tape. Now it's time to add the moon to my acetate strip. And there you can see that I left it way too long. So I'm just going to cut down the acetate strip, just seeing where I need to cut it. And then just cutting it down with some scissors. Adding a new layer of score tape, and I really like that with the swing mechanism, you can just move it out so that you have easy access to the little, uh, little bit of acetate. And I'm removing the score tape, just making sure it doesn't show. Removing the backing paper. And I'm just lining up the moon as straight as I can using the grid on my mat and then pressing down. And that is my little swing mechanism done. It's really hard to show from the angle that I'm filming, but I will insert a little clip at the end to show you how it looks. Um, this card is probably one that you want to deliver in person because if you add it into an envelope, there may be an imprint because of the spin and slide disc. Um, I would just hand deliver that or maybe put it in like a thicker envelope. Now I'm adding the cloud panel to the back. I'm also using score tape. They, One of the edges stood out, or two basically. Uh, I just used some scissors to snip off anything that would stand over. I just added those with some score tape. And now it's time to add the second side of my displayer card. Just folding that flat and lining that up with the side that doesn't have the folding on it. And pressing down firmly. And now I'm just removing the backing paper. No, I'm not. I'm actually checking if the fold is smooth. Because on my very first card it wasn't and it was really bothering me. So now I'm just reinforcing the score line making sure it all lines up smooth, still not quite there yet. Because I do find that it it just looks so much nicer when you have clean edges on your card. Also always making sure not to, you know, scrunch up the bunny because it <laughs> it's moving on there. Now that I have it nice and folded in, I'm just pressing down the card flat, lining it up and pressing into the adhesive. And that's my shadow box done. I really, really love the displayer card. If you have it, tell me, do you love it as well? I think it's just so easy to make shadow box cards that are full A2 size. And I love that when you have a card, a note card attached to it, it basically gives you like a little easel that you can display them easily. And I, I just love them. They're one of my most used interactive dies by now. Now I'm adding my sentiment. It's from the Shall We Dance stamp set by Mama Elephant and it says you are a star, which I thought worked really really nicely with this uh, stamp set. I couldn't use one of the sentiments from the uh, Wish Upon a Star stamp set because I wanted to use the banner and none of them would fit on there. So I just curved the sentiment on my misty door. Just basically wiggling it around until it was uh, a match with the banner. Then I'm using some Versamark ink to stamp it down. I'm just making sure that it's aligned just right before I stamp it down because it just looks way nicer when you take a little bit of time to line it up right. Now I'm just using some powder tool to remove any static cling. 
using my Versamark ink pad to stamp it down. And now I will be using some Ranger embossing powder, the super fine version in silver. Off to the side, my heat gun was already getting nice and hot, and now I'm just running it over the embossing powder until it's smooth and shiny. Now it's time to add the rest of my images. I realized that I cut down way, uh, I die cut way too many <laughs> clouds for the small area, but I ended up using two of the puffy clouds and just also using score tape to add them down. I cut off a little bit of the edges so that I could adjust how far they stuck into my scene. Just added one to the top right and one to the bottom left. And then it was time to adhere my images. I lined up the bunny to basically face the little area that has the star of the moon that's hanging down. And a little bit of the glue was oozing out, so I just used some anti-static powder tool to remove that so that it wouldn't glue my mechanism shut once I uh, pressed down the card. And also adding in the little bunny that's sleeping on the cloud. Now it's time to fold up my banner. There we go. And I'm also adding a little bit of ink blending to the back because I realized that when you fold it one of the sides, a little bit of the edge of the top will be showing. So I made sure to add quite a lot of the uh, Victorian velvet ink so that it's darker because that part would be in shadow. I'm just adding some liquid glue to the bottom of the little wings of the banner and some foam tape in the center or foam squares just to give it a bit of dimension. Those are the scrapbook adhesives uh, foam squares, by the way. Just removing the backing sheets. A liquid glue just on the bottom because the top will be overhanging the window opening a bit. And I'm just using my tweezers to line it up as nicely centered as I can get it. And then I'm just pressing down. And that finishes off my card for today. I really like how it turned out. It's just such a fun little little card. I needed to make sure that the swing mechanism doesn't get stuck behind the, the cloud border. And it just stands up so nicely. You have a little bit of an easel version when you add the um the card base. And it's just Oh, I just love those bunnies. Those are, aren't those just the cutest? And here you can see the swing mechanism just moving it around. There you can see the pretty shine from the liquid pixie dust. And there you go. I will link to Lien's challenge video down below. I'm sure hers will be absolutely fantastic. So please go check her out. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope to see you next time for another crafty video. On screen, I will link to two more videos that may interest you. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye!